This is the um, second time I've been asked to speak to you. So I know uh, it would have been great if Secretary of State, he wanted to be here, but it's really tough to get him. But it's, I'm <coughs> delighted to be here as, as, as his uh, understudy, but also as the minister responsible for, for uh, ensuring that we integrate Hong Kongers into this country. So it's, it's good to be back again. Uh, and I want to say thanks to the work that everyone's uh, doing in the room. I caught the end of the opening session, and whilst there are still problems that government needs to set its mind to addressing, there's a lot that we can, we can celebrate. Um, and it's an important moment, isn't it? Because on Friday the 1st of July, that marked 25 years uh, since the handing over of Hong Kong, and the Prime Minister made clear in his messaging to mark the anniversary that we have deep and long-standing ties with Hong Kong, and we want Hong Kong to succeed and thrive. However, we have seen a steady erosion of political and civil rights since the imposition. There you go, it's a mounting podium. I think that's fantastic. It's partly because I'm quite short-sighted. But anyway, it's been a, uh, we've seen a steady erosion of political and civil rights since the imposition of the national security law uh, on the 30th of June 2020. And authorities have stifled uh, opposition, criminalised dissent and driven out anyone who can speak truth to power. So the UK, working with our allies and partners, will continue to challenge China for breaching the legally binding commitments it willingly signed up, up to under the joint declaration. And we are clear that the most effective way to protect Hong Kong's way of life and the best path to long-term prosperity is through respect for fundamental rights, access to justice, and genuine political participation to full, the, full breadth, the full breadth of Hong Kong society. But for those who choose to leave Hong Kong, and many of you have made that choice in this room, I'm proud that we've established the BNO route that enables people from Hong Kong with BNO status and their eligible family members to move to the UK. And since it was launched at the start of 2021, over 123,000 BNO status holders and their family members have chosen to take uh, the UK up on this offer and applied for the BNO route. And in February, we announced that adult children of those with BNO status will, um, from the autumn, be able to apply to the BNO route independently of their parents. Now, we committed to helping those on the BNO route to integrate and settle into the UK. And last year, we created a program. Uh, that offered a network of support across the UK at national, regional, and local levels to ensure new arrivals both welcome and supported were welcomed and supported to flourish in their new communities. Now, Daniel will know as someone who worked at the heart of Number Ten that it's very rare as a minister that the Downing Street grid aligns with a speech like this. But I can say that luckily the grid slot was secured today, so I can announce, and this is news, I can announce that we've secured further funding to continue to support the BNO visa holders in the UK. So there are two um, uh, important figures. The first is that a further 3.6 million. Um, will be provided to continue the network of welcome hubs across the UK. And I met some people from the Strategic Migration Partnerships that play an important role in that. So that is good news. Let's give that, let's give that a round of applause. And the second incredibly important uh, uh, bit of advice for many of the organisations in this room is that a further three million for the voluntary and community sector uh, organisations, the VCSE organisations, will is going to be made available to deliver national and regional uh, projects. I can announce it is a three million sum of money that will be committed for the second year. So that's great news for those organisations. Well, we'll continue all the work, uh, that gives us the funding envelope to continue all the good work that has happened, and we'll, we'll continue to update the welcome pack, and I'm told that there have been 30,000 unique downloads, so it's certainly uh, a pack that is being used um, very widely. Um, I'd like to uh, touch on uh, the achievements of the, many of the organisations um, that are helping ensure that BNO status holders are integrated um, uh, in, in, into the country. And, um, you know, I'm impressed with the pace and scale of what's been achieved in a short period of time, with an incredible 44,000 instances of support delivered and 350 events uh, taken place across the UK. Um, and it makes, that makes a huge difference. 
Uh, we've, um, in, on the education front, um, provided help for mums and dads who want to know which schools to send their kids to and how to connect with their parents. But I got an example um, of one of the bits of help from the Welcome Churches group that showed me the, the little booklet um, for kids. And it's, it's amazing, if those of you haven't seen it, I really, really enjoyed reading that. And as a parliamentarian, um, I, I was amused to read that since 1313, it's in the book, if you want to find I don't remember which page, but it's in the book. Since 1313, you, it is illegal for anyone to go into the Houses of Parliament in armour. <laughs> since 1313. A full, well, around 100 years after Agincourt, it was banned. You couldn't go in there. That's a sign that we were there to talk, not to, not to fight. But that's fantastic news. So there's been a, a, a welcome, this welcome magazine distributed um, uh, right, right over... The, and I think it's been distributed to about 70,000 people, is my understanding, through that network, which is, you know, a phenomenal effort. Um, there's been lots of work on employability, helping people get into work. I, I made a, a visit to, to Hackney to hear about some of those initiatives, um, and there have been lots of coaching se sessions, uh, entrepreneur networking events. Obviously, we all know that Hong Kong, you Hong Kongers are amazingly entrepreneurial people, so it's great uh, to provide those networking uh, sessions that, that, that help entrepreneur, entrepreneurs um, be, be successful. Um, something that's come up repeatedly is the importance of um, helping with mental health, and, um, and, uh, and, but, but we have provided support for young people and adults with mental health problems, um, and one young person received therapeutic counsel, counselling for language issues, which subsequently gave her the confidence to start her new school. But I know there's a lot more that we can do around the mental health issue. Um, when it comes to social integration, we've seen many examples aimed at integrating the B&O community, uh, and one regional VCSE organisation reached over 500 B&O status holders in their local area through, um, through an opening ceremony, followed by yoga, art and English classes. So that's just finding the way of bringing people together. I'm glad everybody in the Hong Kong community likes yoga. Well, I don't like yoga, but I'm sure you all like <laughs> yoga. Um, but thanks, uh, importantly, to Daniel and Sunda, um, through their organisations that have been able to um, to fund further stakeholder engagement and research um, so that the welcoming program continues to develop um, uh, the, it, based on the needs of B&O uh, status holders. So we're getting the research through you to, to really target and get that, that right. And uh, we, we recognise that uh, the experience of many is great, but sometimes uh, we, we, there are examples of um, people really struggling and we, we did recognise right at the outset the need for a hate crime reporting service uh, you know how we see in the Muslim community with Tel Mama, um, or um, in, in, you know in the in the in the um, in, in other communities. But you know we, we're keen to um, ensure that um, um, that we that, that happens, and we'll be shortly announcing one. Um, uh, in, in very, very shortly, be announcing a, a new hate crime reporting service. Um, we also know that the Welcome Pubs are doing a fantastic job, and um, and I know many of the regional leads are here. I think I met one. Um, certainly met one of the regional leads here today, um, I think from the east of England, if I'm right, uh, and they um, are providing um, support in both English and Cantonese, um, and there's lots of partnership working, um, collaborating with the NHS and helping access public services. So lots of good work from the help, welcoming hubs, and, and thank you to them, and I'm glad that they, they are getting that chunk of funding to continue that important work. Um, so... Um, I think today's panels are great. It's an opportunity for me as a minister to hear not just the good things, but areas where we as a government need to respond, sharpen our act. Um, and, um, and I've been out and about, I have to say. Um, I was hosted by Jabez Lam at the Hackney Chinese Community Service. Uh, I didn't make it to the Lunar New, Year, New, Lunar New Year party in Islington, but I did send a message of support. But it's been, been great to be out amongst you all. Uh, and I want to thank you once again for all you're doing uh, to make sure that um, we make um, the arrival of Hong Kongers in this country an unparalleled success. But I'm sure the second year will build on all the good works that we started out in our first year. So thank you very much to all of you.